About to break podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Hughes, and this is going to be a fun episode. It's a fun season. It's a busy season for me. I've been traveling a lot, which is good. And um, and yesterday was my first day off since probably like three or four weeks. And the first day that I wasn't traveling or performing, and we put a new roof on part of the house. <laughs> Because that's just what you do when you have a have a house that you gotta you gotta take care of. So I'm grateful for it. I'm very tired though. So if I sound a little sleepy on this intro, it's not because I'm not excited. I'm crazy excited. Uh, but there's a lot of good stuff going on. If you are listening to this the day it comes out, that means that last night we had the very first about to break live at the clubhouse in Hollywood. So fun. Chris Ruggiero was there. You're going to hear about him on this podcast because it is all about him. And my buddy Johnny Beaner, who was featured in like episode, I don't know, two or three or something like that way back in the day. Great stand-up comedian. So much fun. Thank you to everyone who came out to that show. If you didn't have a chance to make it, we are going to be doing those every single month. It'll be the last Tuesday of every month at the clubhouse theater in Hollywood. So stay tuned. We'll tell you more about that. Big thank you to all the producers. Guys, I've been overwhelmed this month by everyone who's jumped on and who's been supporting the show uh, as you know we don't have a sponsor for this show and it takes a lot of time to create these uh these episodes and, and to share with people just this week we had uh tiffany tricoche sponsor the podcast thank you tiffany so appreciate you and tim and debbie seed and top thank you guys it means the world to me that you guys would care enough about this program and what we're doing to jump on board and be a producer now you may be thinking what's what's a producer you know isn't the show free yes it is it's free to listen to on every platform, uh, but it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of money to produce every single week. Our producers help offset the cost of that. If you are interested in becoming a producer of the show, just go to the about to break podcast.com. That's about to break podcast.com and scroll down to where it says become a producer. And for as little as a dollar or more a month, you can become a producer of the show. And uh, once you get to the five dollar level, you start getting some really cool rewards. I'll be sending you some things in the mail. Uh, there's also going to be some special bonus episodes coming up that you cannot get unless you are a producer of the show. It's just my way of uh, doing even more work to say thank you to those who are helping make it possible for me to produce the show. So thank you everyone who's doing that. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for producing the show. It means a ton. This Saturday, March 3rd, I will be performing in downtown Upland. That's right. It's my hometown. It's about uh, 35, 40 miles east of downtown Los Angeles over here in the Inland Empire. And I'd love to see you guys there. So if you live out in my neck of the woods this Saturday, March 3rd, come on out. It's a free show uh, with your dinner or your drink at uh, Charlie's Bar and Grill. It's not a crazy expensive place. It's just a hometown bar and grill, fun place. And uh, we wanted to help them out as they're doing their grand reopening. And so I said, hey, why don't we put on a show? I'm going to bring some guys out. My buddy Nick Paul is going to be there. He's hilarious. He's incredible. You've heard him on the show. Now you can see him live. Come see us this Saturday, uh, March 3rd. And the show's going to start around 830 do a little close-up magic from table to table uh get to say hi to everybody and then nine o'clock we'll hit the stage with a really really fun show so i hope to see you all there uh that's this saturday march 3rd in downtown upland at charlie's bar and grill if you'd like more information about that or anything else going on hop over to about to break podcast.com and we can get you all of that info i'm really excited about this week's guest and not only because he's a great performer and a really good friend but he reminds me of how to do things right in LA. I've lived in Southern California my entire life and up until about a year and a half ago I realized I wasn't really doing everything I could to connect with people. You know you, you tend to build relationships with those around you and you keep that set of friends and you know if you get a new job maybe you get some new friends there. If you move into a new apartment complex maybe you make some new friends there. But then there's other folks, folks like Chris Ruggiero who are just at everything you go to. Chris is an incredible performer but he understands that life happens through connection and through relationship and not in a selfish way where you're just trying to take advantage of someone or not the kind of person that is at the party looking past you while you're talking 
to them because they're looking to see if someone more important comes in the room. He's a guy that says yes to life. He's a great juggler. He's made his living juggling for the last 10 years, but he's also a great videographer and a great storyteller. And he uses all these skills to not only present live experiences, but to create a YouTube channel where he takes you behind the scenes and shows you what life is like when you choose to live in a van because you want to experience the road. Or what happens when you say yes to a friend who says, do you want to go to Hawaii this week? He's such a great encouragement to me. I know that you're going to really enjoy him. Please go check out his podcast, Between Dreams, and check out uh, the links here to get to his YouTube channel. And if you've got something going on where you need live entertainment or you need motivation or encouragement or someone to come speak to your group, he's a great dude. You're going to love him. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with my buddy, Chris Ruggiero. You have a red recording light up there. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> It's my favorite. Ever since uh ever since I watched Full House growing up, I was like, I'm oh, gonna down in someday, the basement. Yeah, <laughs> if I ever get a studio, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Hey everybody, welcome to About to Break. I'm your host, Taylor Hughes, and this week I am joined once again in the shed quarters, this time by my buddy Chris Ruggiero. Thanks hey. for being here, man. Yeah, my name my face is on the wall too. Yeah, we I, I thought it'd be fun. We have <laughs> The TV set up, you know, for different video shoots, and I thought it'd be fun. I made a big old graphic of Chris. <laughs> so he walked in. That was the first thing he saw was himself. <laughs> How does that feel, man? That's pretty good. I like that. I like, uh, I want. I wanted to say that this is this is such a cool spot. A lot of people do podcasts, and it's like they somehow make it like really crappy. Yeah. <laughs> Like we work really hard to make podcast experience awful. Yeah, you're like, you do all this stuff and then it's like, you know, no one, most people that are doing podcasts is because it's like, they're like, oh, well, I, this is just a thing that I'm going right. to do and oh, it's yeah. like really crappy and you have a whole setup and it's oh, really thanks, great to man. see like a, a proper setup with <laughs> uh, real microphones and a screen that my face is on. Yeah, your, your face is on the screen. That's a big thanks <laughs> to the producers or the future producers who will help me pay this off in the months to come. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Chris and I met, let's see, we first met at Adam Grabowski's Grab Bag Show oh, yeah. in Santa Monica. That was the first, first <laughs> moment of silence. Uh, as with most shows in LA, you have <laughs> one low attended show and then you're finding a new venue. It's, yeah. We are in the process with Jokers and Aces of looking for a new venue. Oh. This is the way life goes. Yeah. <laughs> But Chris and I met at Adam's show, and that was such a fun night. And uh, let's see, that was like maybe a year ago? Yeah, probably. Prob probably about a year ago. Yeah, and then we've run into each other a whole ton since. Chris is an amazing juggler. And uh, let's see, what else does he do? He has a clothing brand. He's a videographer. He do You do it all, <laughs> and you've only been here how long? Like two years? Yeah, just we were just talking about that. I've been uh, coming up right on two years of being in LA. Of course, I didn't start doing all the things that I've been doing since I've you know, yeah, you, you been were doing a lot these of years before, before that. But uh, yeah, and I think that's, uh, I think a real benefit of what I do is that I am able to kind of dabble. It's it's maybe a benefit and a downside of what I do is that I do a little bit of all these things. And the benefit is that I can make my own promo video for right. like the podcast or we're filming this right now. And I'm like, oh, I can use this on my channel. And the, the, the key, I think, to any industry or whatever people are in, showbiz or not, is yeah. kind of making stuff so people can see you and hear about you and get to know you and trust you as a person and being able to record audio and record video and take photos oh yeah um are like a world that i've been increasingly more interested in because i'm realizing that you know my job my my quote job has been juggling that's how i like kind of made a living for the past 10 years yeah but I'm finding that like people are responding more and it's becoming easier to get gigs even like yesterday or the day before yesterday I just shot promo photos for a, a friend of mine who's a musician. Yeah. And it was like that was you know sure I'm not like I don't consider myself only a professional photographer but that was cool like I was like yeah whatever you can just cover my day cover right. my day like my afternoon and and that was like a really cool benefit because like pretty much anyone can use an extra little side hustle quote totally thing. i don't like the side hustle word but <laughs> no it's true i mean they're in this industry the, it seems to me like the guys and the gals the the men and women who are doing really well are the ones who are they're like almost renaissance people because you know in our in our industry performers you need promo you need 
to be able to move equipment. You need, you know, so like, yeah. we can't hire people to do all this stuff at the beginning, at least. Yeah. You need to know how to do all that. I always laugh that someone should make a book about how, like, if you're going to be a professional entertainer, you have to be a professional sound, sound man and a pro- professional yeah, yeah. videographer and a professional moving company. Like, you learn all these weird things that most people don't ever have to know about <laughs> yeah. just to get to the gig. Yeah, and there's something in that. I don't know what direction we're we're trying to go with this, but I think this is really there is valuable. No direction and, at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is really cool. It's like there is a there is a time when it's important to realize that oh, I I can't do everything, and you can kind of have a team. Oh, this person is better at this, and this person is better at this. But as far as like thinking about video, you could hire somebody. You know, it's going to cost you a thousand dollars, or five hundred dollars, or two thousand right. dollars, or ten thousand dollars to get a vi- professional video right. thing done. But if you know, if you go into that knowing by shooting your own promo videos by like setting up a crappy camera in the back of the room you'll learn then then at least you can gut when you do hire or are ready to hire someone you'd be like um you know you can guide them because they might shoot videos for they might not have ever shot a juggling or a magic or oh, a yeah. music or uh whatever industry people are in and you'd be like cool like i know you're the professional about doing this camera but like can i guide you to show you like i like shots that show me with the audience. And that's yeah. what I always turn into. Photographers come to my shows and they have portraits of me, like this one that's on the wall right here. Yeah. Go to my YouTube channel and watch this video. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> and what's, the, what's the channel? We'll, we'll pitch it right now. Yeah, just search my name, Chris Ruggiero. Chris Ruggiero. And you'll find we'll it. We'll and, put a link. And that's something, I know this sounds like we're getting off track, but, uh, but we're getting somewhere of yeah. just like people will get these portraits, which is cool for something, but I always tell photographers, I'm like, pull back like shoot me from like don't i don't audience, care about my face get, like yeah. i can get the the headshot right. in a studio i know what like, I look shoot like. me from behind showing the audience and stuff like that you're trying to capture the moment yeah you're, because the picture sells the experience yeah right? and and where i was getting with that is that i think just knowing that yeah. now when i do hire a photographer or a videographer to come shoot my show i know what i need. now i didn't waste that five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars to hire a videographer to come out because and then they get the shots that i could have just got in a empty theater right. with no audience there i i feel like it's it's also so important for artists to get the experience of what some of the behind the scenes stuff takes mm-hmm. because it not only like what you're saying it allows you to know how to communicate and how to say this is the framing i want this you know i want to i want to you know head to waist shot on this you yeah. know or whatever but it also makes you more appreciative because you know that that three minute video took 10 hours to yeah, end. yeah do you know what i mean yeah I, I I think it's funny how often, I, just this week, I had a friend of mine who got in a pickle and was like, I know you know how to edit. I can't afford a huge editor. Yeah. I got to get this out. You know, can you help me? And worked with them on it. And the people that were wanting this video had no concept of how much just changing this one thing w- in the middle messed the whole thing up because it's yeah. all to music, and, you know? Right. It just makes you appreciative when you start to learn other people's industry and other people's work. Yeah. <laughs> So I should probably say I should probably say this on this podcast. The only format is us talking like this. <laughs> cool. So so I'm not I'm not worried about us hitting certain things or not hitting certain things. For me, when I was starting to go full time, which wasn't that long ago, I went through a really crappy experience before that. And the thing that encouraged me wasn't listening to like the super inspirational stuff. Yeah. It was the real stuff. It was yeah. this kind of stuff of going like, hey, you know, if you bring a camera to the show, it's going to be valuable. Right. You know? So that's that's all the show is about is the ups and the downs. Trying cool. to break yeah. the industry before it breaks you. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I, I think we have a lot of things to go. I'm not sure what the listeners want to hear. And that's what's exciting now. You're, you're doing a lot of stuff where interactive stuff with the Patreon and stuff where yeah. as as this moves forward, they'll be able to really contribute and guide you onto where you want to go. Yeah. But what do you think is the most valuable thing for us to chat about for that for the listeners right now? Um, and if you're listening, email <laughs> yeah, What's the e- they can. Uh, yeah, they can send an email to about to break podcast at gmail dot com, or you can there, just go I just to a force you to do that. No, or you can just go to about to break podcast dot com, and there's a, a comment section on there, and I read every comment, I reply to every email, and uh, yeah, we we do want you to help us shape the show because this isn't we talk anyway. Yeah, we're recording it because we want it to help other people. So yeah, and to kind of. <laughs> 
<laughs> since I have a podcast too. Yes. I <laughs> it's always funny when there's podcast people that, or like different hosts, people that have like a host role that yeah. have on my podcast and then they start like dominating and they start asking me questions <laughs> and I'm like, "Wait, wait." It's a full like, oh, this I know. Is, You're like, yeah. "Wait a minute. No, no, no." But to <laughs> to kind of drive what I think is key to uh you know delivering something valuable is and i'm working on this a lot of my content that i'm creating through pretty much every uh medium of you know audio visual live experiences and youtube is this mindset of like uh (laughs) just working on this right now of like getting into the mindset of and, and getting the tools to get into the mindset of making things happen yeah and as you said the the kind of the hypey motivational stuff is like kind of sometimes nice, but then sometimes you need to, you're like, oh, you finish watching it and then you're like right back to like feeling worse because that person (laughs) like did more than you're doing right now or something. Yeah. Um, And I think that, so to, to just take it into my own hands of what the, you know, the most valuable thing that I've had in, in all these things of creating podcasts and now I'm trying to do more YouTube videos and create live experiences and so many people i get messages from like teenagers on instagram and not only teenagers uh every age really and they they ask me about like oh how like that's so cool how did you start this or this or how how do we do this and and now you have this like whole setup here you have microphones and this but like you didn't start with that you started with like, yeah. I remember when you said you had one of these microphones because you your your buddy sold you one yeah. used, oh, yeah. and then then you found another one, and then you built this and you built these pieces, and it comes together. And for me, the 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 uh, the challenge has always been, oh, I don't, I'm not ready for this because I don't have this camera or something. And right. and I know everyone battles with that. If they're like, oh, if I only had this camera, I could make a better YouTube channel. And then I think it's just like jump in and make things happen. Yeah, start. Oh yeah, <laughs> my daughter uh, is 12. And my oldest, and she started a YouTube channel three months ago, and she's already got like 20 videos out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing. And she gets, you know, she just, for her, and what I love is there's this innocence of like, she's not trying to impress anybody. Yeah. She's just like, this is what I like to do. And she does it on her little iPhone yeah. and posts it directly from iMovie and you know what I mean? It's like, she could have said, well, dad, I need, you know, a $6,000 setup to be able to get started. Yeah. Just do it. Just do something. Like, you don't need to wait for permission from someone. And this is the great thing about being an artist in this time period is we don't need someone to invite us to host a podcast. Mm -hmm. I just one day started this podcast and said, I'm going to host a podcast. (laughs) You know? Yeah. I came up with a name. Yeah. (laughs) Bought an $11 (laughs) web domain. Yeah. And you don't even need that. You 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 just go post it on YouTube. You don't need to buy anything. Yeah. Well, and I think I think a big question to ask too, you know, because a lot of young people will say, how do I get started doing this? My question is always why? Mm. Why do you want to do it? Yeah. Because they go, I want a channel and I want to have millions of followers. Well, what are you going to tell those millions of people? What is the, what is it that makes you want to do this? If it's just to have an audience, but for no reason at all, it's going to be pretty empty. Like yeah. there's got to be a purpose behind it. Yeah. Which is why I think it's cool what you do on your show is you say, look, I'm, I travel all around. I meet amazing people and I want to showcase these people. I want you yeah. to hear their stories. Like we don't get that often. Yeah. We get, you know, Logan Paul running through a forest. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. Yeah. <laughs> That was like a week ago. That's, uh, that's true. That's too over. late. Too late. <laughs> too late. Too late. <laughs> We're on to the next thing. <laughs> what do you think the big? So as I feel like you, this your pot, you know, you're you're really committing to making this a thing. You know, you you built a shed. <laughs> yeah, well, well, a big part of building <laughs> building the shed because I do have a job where I don't go to the office. Yeah. So this a big part of this was I needed a place where I could work and. My family didn't have to leave the house every time I had a meeting or a phone call or, you know, so um, that's a big part of it, too. So, sorry, go ahead. It's really cool. And (laughs) that's awesn't it's you 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 committed to yeah. making this happen you know for for the magic business but then also you know it's you're building a lot of stuff around the podcast and building content and stuff yeah. what do you think was the 
turning point of like, okay, cool, I'm going because we all start things, and then it was like, ah, well, okay, well that, and that's okay yeah. to stop people. Like, well, don't never give up. Well, that's what you need to do when oh, yeah. something. If you don't like something, or if it's like not fun, or it's not del- getting results, like you yeah. can stop doing it and do something else, even if it's like what you've spent ten years building. You like right. don't need to say, oh well, I need to keep doing this because i've done it for yeah. this long i need to keep you know that's one of the perks of this job is that we don't have to quit something we just stop uploading yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i for me the podcast the reason i've committed to it is because i started it and i just freaking fell in love with it i yeah. fell in love with the medium of conversation that wasn't there was no agenda to it. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I love entertainment and I love watching late night talk shows, but I get tired of a seven minute predictable conversation yeah, yeah. with an anecdotal story about something that happened at the grocery store that probably <laughs> didn't happen. And I just like, you know, I just want to hear people be real, Yeah, you know, and be serious about what they do, but also not take themselves so seriously that we can't be like, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. Like, yeah. This month is going to be a great month for me. Like, I'll, I'll be completely open. This month is going to be a fantastic month financially, and I'll be working, and I'll be busy, and then it tapers off for a couple of months. Yeah. And it scares me to death. Yeah. But it's encouraging to know I'm not the only one going through that. Yeah. Or that there's something, you know, broken because of that. Right. It's it's good to talk to guys who have been in this business longer than I have and them say, yeah, that's... It's a flow, it's a roller coaster, it's a fluctuation, you know? Yeah. So when I when I think about what these kind of conversations have meant to me, it encourages me to go, well, I'll just keep uploading. I'll make another one. I'll do it yeah. next week too, you know? Because I feel like there might be somebody out there who may be thrown in the towel this week, but they hear someone else say, hey, it's okay, it'll get better, and then they can keep going. Yeah. One of my favorite, um, uh, probably a lot of people listening will know who James Altucher is, author and kind of internet person. I think he's kind of going off the off the deep end lately, but <laughs> a little bit. But he had a great, uh, a little while ago, because he writes a bunch of books and, and he just talks about make getting getting things going. And, yeah. and, you know, his world was the choose yourself was one of his, you know, it's like no one else is going to pick you in today's world. Yeah. Like you can't wait for someone to pick you or give you a job or give you an opportunity. You need he to says, choose yourself. He says, choose yourself. I like that. And uh, somebody he used to do this like question and answer show. And someone was like, how's the, what's the best thing that I can do? Like, what's this trick that I can do to market my book <laughs> that I just wrote? I yeah. spent, you know, six months or a year writing this book. Well, how do I, and no one's buying it. What do I do? And he was like, you write another book. Yeah. Like stop living in that one. Like it's, of course, yeah, yeah. like do what you can do with that one. But also, like, you just move forward because then you write another book. Yeah. And now you're marketing two books. Yeah. And now you're making, you know, not that it's just for the money, but you're getting that message out more. And I think a lot of people make one YouTube. I fall into this too. I make one YouTube video. It gets 120 views. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to stop doing that because that wasn't worth it. Where the other side of that is, well, what if I just made another video every day? Right. And those 120 people will go back to the previous video and then the back to the previous video. And then you have this exponential growth. Yeah. And that's like with the podcast, if someone doesn't, if you get like bad numbers on something that you post or something, right. that's like what do you do? Most people will be like, oh, well, this isn't working, so I'm going to stop. Yeah. And if you really want to do it, like, the only thing to do is do another one. Yeah, and you just get, keep going. You might get less on the next one. But yeah. I have 250 videos or something on my YouTube channel. It's incredible. And most of them have, like, negligible views, but just try and and it's always trying new things and and going in different directions and then i met kyle kesterson at scott neary's booby trap show yeah the one night and we're just chatting i was like oh yeah he he was like oh that was cool i was like oh how did you end up here after like just asking him and yeah he was saying oh he he was like visiting la i was like oh that's cool and then he said something about how he has a van and he's (laughs) staying in this van i was like oh that's sweet i like love that like mobile lifestyle world Right, of you, travelers. you've done a lot of videos on and your channel about that's it. That's how that was the first one. So I was <laughs> like, I was like, I've been mean, I've been like trying to find people to share these stories of how people live like a free, a yeah. freedom lifestyle, like living in a van or an RV. Yeah. I did his video. I I published his video, and it got like you know, it got over a hundred thousand views, which that's on incredible. my channel is that's, that's the great. biggest, the biggest uh, video I have. And it was because I didn't, I didn't like. 
I was posting juggling videos and no one was watching them. Yeah. And it's like, you can be stubborn about that or you can be like, oh, I'm also, I'm also interested in this. I wasn't like, yeah. sacri- I wasn't like chasing the views. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I'm interested in these people who travel and stuff. And I was like, that could be, you know, if, if people aren't really responding to me showing off doing right. tricks, I can do something else that's interesting to me. And, and that's what's key. Just like keep moving forward yeah. instead of trying to like be Th- frustrated. That's so good, man. This this is something I would love to talk to you about specifically because I think you embody this. This idea of just saying yes to yeah. opportunity. You've been in LA just a little over two years and you've done more in LA than most people that have been here 20, 30 <laughs> years. But I, I think a big part of it is not only because you're very talented, not only because you're a nice guy and people want to be around you. But you also say yes to opportunities yeah. and you leave the house. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm amazed at how many people are like, they want to be working actors and they go on an audition, but then they don't ever meet other people. Yeah. Everything I'm doing today came through relationship. Right. It didn't come because I was sitting in my bedroom practicing magic for 20 years, which right. I was, <laughs> but yeah. it came from relationship, Yeah, you know? And so I, I'd love to just kind of hear your thoughts on that. Cause like, I mean, even, even you and I sitting here today, you agreed to do a show for Adam and I agreed and we ended up on the same show. And then you invited me to booby trap and I went to booby trap and I met Scott and then I started doing booby trap and now we're both sitting here yeah, talking about this stuff it, just because of saying yes to something. There's a, I mean, I could, that's kind of the thesis, if you will, of, of all of my work lately yeah. um, from the book. Um, so I self published a book called just go, which is, yeah. you know, the just say yes yeah. to things and, and instead of thinking about them and then another recent, you know, so I'll tie that into all the, 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 the pieces of, of things that I've created in, uh, a recent YouTube video was what happens when you say yes, yeah. exactly. That I think is the title and, and the, and the theme of that was I ended up in Hawaii yeah, because uh, <laughs> someone was like, "Hey, do you?" That's a my... great video, by the way. That yeah, was yeah, so thanks. Fun. I was like, yeah. I was like really happy with how that like kind of it was a good theme to it. And it was my buddy was going to Hawaii, and he was like, "Hey, do you want to go?" I was like, "I don't," you know, I was like, "Don't really have yeah a thousand dollars to go to Hawaii." Yeah, and then he it turned out where he needed some help doing something anyway, so he was like, "I'll pay for your ticket to go out there," and I already have an Airbnb book, so like literally yeah. you're just like buy your own food yeah which i would have to do in la anyway right. and uh you know and then it's, you get there and it's like well, there's like there's ways to do it and i know everyone can't just like fly to hawaii but the thing of saying yes and doing things is in a you know it's and it's all it's not because i'm like oh i'm gonna help out my friends like there is that aspect of it and then the other half is like almost everything that we do is for selfish reasons because we like want to get out there and do this and it's not like I, you know, you not that's not the driving force, but there right. is in every one of those saying yes and doing things, there's like selfish things that you're going to gain stuff from it. Yeah. Um, you're never going to like lose out on something. And, and in that, again, I know that's like a, a kind of be careful with the mindset of that. Like you can't go into the stuff everything like oh what am i going to get out of this motivated out of like what's this going to do right but like there is that will help you get out and do stuff because sometimes you do want to stay home right and so i think there's the balance of that like you for me i get out there and do stuff all the time and it's like yeah today uh coming and recording the podcast like yeah that's it's cool for me i get to share this stuff it's not like, uh, you know, or like doing free shows in L.A. Right. You know, you're not like making money, you're losing money, driving right. around. Paying and for you parking. Pay for parking. <laughs> people are like, oh, congrats. Like, looks like you're crushing it. I'm like, no, it cost me $30 to perform today. And <laughs> but on the, on the other side of it is showing up at like Adam's show, Grab Bag, yeah. and then meeting you and then get, getting into this world and then uh, I, I perform at Scott's show, Booby Trap, almost every week. Yeah. And... There's things that, you know, through Scott, someone meets me at Booby Trap or, or some TV show or something sees Scott and then Scott says, oh, yeah, I, you know, and what's Scott, even what Scott's doing is is really great where he's out there. He's not um, he's not doing that show to be like a big glamorous thing. He's doing that because, you know, you, you can we can all leave L.A. to make money right. in, <laughs> in yeah. doing juggling and magic variety shows. And then the and then in L.A. we do things that are like actually and Fun he talked about like he, life giving and <laughs> yeah he, he just talked about it i think on nick paul's podcast yeah, about how he that, yeah. was 
uh, you know, it's like you go to do a show, a corporate show, and you sit on an airplane for a day, you you do the yep. show, you go back to your hotel uh. at night alone. So that's what Booby Trap is. And a lot of the other shows that that we say yes to are community building it. And I mean, that's, and you, as you said, no, none of the opportunities came from practicing the skill. Like that's a given, like right. you, you're good, if you're good, like you, you be, be good at what you're doing. Yeah. But this, the, and that there's, there's that world. Um, but that's assumed that yeah. if you're a professional, you put in the lifetime. Yep. Now put in the thing, show up at the event and yeah. say yes to this and and talk to people afterwards and right. in the dressing room or backstage or before the show, say hi to people. Whereas I see so many people who are in the dressing room and they're just like annoyed that they're there. And like why <laughs> you didn't have no one forced you to do this. Right. So, like, why not just make the most of it? And I think that's all that it comes down to. I don't know if that, like, wh- where that man. goes. But, like, I don't think it's this big profound thing. It's just, like, show up. Yeah. And, well, and say hi to people. Yep. And that's literally what gives you every opportunity. That's, like, nice to do for everyone. Yeah. I, I find that, like, I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day, too. I talked to somebody, some performer was at Booby Trap, and I was, like, I said something. I was, like... Hey, that was really cool. I gave him like a specific compliment. (laughs) And it wasn't like a... Like, like it was like, you actually saw? (laughs) Yeah. Well, and it was like, it was uh, somebody, I don't know, it was like a music. And I was like, that was really cool because it like combined this and this. And I think that would be a really cool for like, people are going to respond to this because it wasn't like some weird thing that you did for what you weren't on stage for therapy for yourself. Right. Oh, yeah. Too many performers are. That's a whole nother thing. But like, you're not there for yourself. Like, do that at home. Yeah. or go to therapy if you need that like absolutely but like don't go on stage to like solve your like yeah. you're there to give the audience a, a real like uh an experience yeah not an to enjoyable fix experience. your own problems yeah if you're if you're in this business <laughs> to feel better about yourself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you made a wrong call i think i think what you're saying is huge man i think the 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 personal desire of saying this is going to be good for me, that's what gets you out of the house. Yeah. Because if you if it was just about what's going to be comfortable, you just stay at home and watch Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. But like, that's when you do something for you is when you actually get up and you leave the house. And then after that, just be all about other people. Yeah. Like you're saying, like, give somebody a compliment that was actually thoughtful. Yeah. Or like the other night, like, I freaking loved... Um, is it ho- horse a spoon in a bucket? Oh yeah, they're so freaking fun. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a child again. I thought there's whimsy in the world. Yeah, I'm like, I'm buying their CD. <laughs> did I have ten extra bucks at that time? Maybe not, but yeah. I did it because you've you've got to let other people know you care and be about other people and and not just because maybe it's gonna come back to you. Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, gosh, I get so excited about that stuff. Like, I'm freaking. I'll be I'll be at a corporate event you know, making great money that I had to fly to in a nice hotel. And all I can think about is doing four minutes at booby trap on Wednesday. (laughs) Yeah. There's something about those environments where it's just like, oh yeah, I'm not the only one. Yeah. You know, there's other circus folk out here. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You came from Pennsylvania. So So here's what I'm fascinated by. We're talking about relationship in LA and how there's so many people doing this. What was it like when you were doing this for 10 years in Pennsylvania before you came here? Was, yeah, was there like a community of entertainers back there? No. And, and oh man, there's so much built in. There's so many directions to go with well, that. Well, let's do um, it because here's the thing. You've got a podcast. You've got a YouTube channel. All of that is about other people. Yeah. I want to hear Chris Ruggiero's yeah. story. <laughs> I want to hear you. You're in Pennsylvania. That is interesting that you say that of like how I've kind of, I don't even really think about it, but like that's what all my, my content now is sharing other people's things. Right. And, so this is you. Kind of this is your decided to stop like being i'm still the center of it but um going back to so the pennsylvania thing i grew up in pennsylvania my whole life and in kind of like the lehigh valley area so north of philadelphia only child brothers sisters i have an older brother yeah uh and 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 people think like phil uh pennsylvania is like philadelphia and pittsburgh they don't realize that there's six hours of nothing in between there's zealy and opal (laughs) yeah (laughs) And there's, uh, there's Marysville. I've yeah, there's, Pennsylvania has like the best there's town names. Cranberry ever. Township. That's another one I've been to. <laughs> I don't know why Pennsylvania has so many crazy uh, names. But, yeah. yeah. So I, my dad was a, like a hobby juggler. So he had juggling okay. supplies around. So that's how I started. Yeah. And, and that was kind of essential for me to learn because otherwise there wasn't 
you know, any, there wasn't a juggling club or, or, and when I was a kid, there weren't like circus schools. Now there's a circus school in every town. When yeah. I was a kid, like if you weren't on the school sports team, there was like a gymnastics thing. But okay. if you were a boy that was interested in gymnastics, you know, you, yeah, you, it was were, looked you down weren't, upon you weren't like, really allowed to yeah. do that uh, uh, socially. We've come a long way and still have a it's, lot farther to go. <laughs> yeah, but it's great now. It's like the, most towns or, or you know, maybe not in your town, but like nearby, there yeah. might be like a circus school oh, or yeah. a circus club where maybe you can't go every week, but you can go once, you know, a couple times a year just to like learn, you know, and there's like, I know there's like, a lot of that is popping up now. It's a bit becoming, you know, where you, where you don't need to play baseball or soccer or basketball. Like right. those are great, but sometimes kids are interested in more than three different things. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, so that's, so there wasn't that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Did you have so the Klutz book of juggling? <laughs> I had to, I never read a book or had any training in juggling or showbiz or circus or anything like that. And, and I, and I, I like that because now I do things my way. Yeah. Um, and so, so I will learn how to juggle, but then I was, I never really got, I was playing music in high school into college, just playing drums in bands and, you know, cool. making $50 playing in a bar or something. It's yeah. crazy. You know, when you're in high school, you make $50 for playing oh, yeah. drums in a bar. You're like, you're oh, like, this is nuts. I would play drums or go to a bar for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that was like, that kind of gave me my intro into showbiz of like, oh, this is cool. There's like a world out here of you can, you can be and make create entertainment for people. Yeah. And then I went to Penn State University where there was a juggling club because okay. Penn State University has 45,000 students. So there's a club for Ooh. everything. There was actually a magic club and a juggling club and they weren't even the same thing. They Dude, were that's separate. That's amazing. Despite what that people think they are the same skill. <laughs> and... So I got really involved with the juggling club and found there was like 10 other people who were like good jugglers. And yeah. and this often gets skipped over, but I, there was times when I would go and, and there was these these moments of this is like a really valuable thing of Pennsylvania is freezing, especially in the winter. And there would be nights when I would go like hike across campus in the wet snow to go yeah. to, with my juggling clubs to go to the juggling club thing at the gym. Yeah. And like no one else would show up that night. And I would just be like, ah, oh, that like that was my I, I cared more about that than like going to class that day. Yeah, like I remember yeah, yeah. like sitting in class, like, oh, well, at least there's juggling club tonight. I can go like do that for two oh, hours. Totally, man. And I would spend the whole like week looking up to that. And I would go walk across campus and no one else would show up. And I was just like, oh, that was like the only thing that I <laughs> wanted yeah. to do. Like that's I cared more about that again as the, than like the school than the classes that I was doing. And then there would be like Sometimes like week after week, I would keep showing up and no one would be there. And I was like, this is like terrible. It's like, why, what are we doing? And then I'd be, I kind of took over the club. And I remember there was a time when we had like one of the times that I was hosting, like kind of like more organizing it. Yeah. We had like 35 people show up and there's like a photo of this somewhere. Oh. And it was just one of those things I was like, no one used to come to this, but I like just showed a slight bit of interest and like tried to reach out, like get more people to right. come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like all these people, like people were bringing their friends and it was like such a cool thing in that, um, not that I did something amazing, but it was like I pers I kept following something I was really interested in. Yeah. And then because of that, it created a whole new life. Like I didn't get 35 people to come there, but I did in a oh, weird that's indirect so way. Cool. I might have gotten four people to come there by yeah. telling them. And then that built and that's so relevant to anything. It's like do, do what you're interested in, whatever it is. It's like right now there's you're on a walk across the snow like literally it, it's like a it's, it sounds like a parable of like <laughs> right, me right. walking across town in the snow right and no one's showing up and that's where everyone almost everyone is right now where they feel frustrated and i feel frustrated like that with my youtube channel or my podcast right. sometimes i walk across the snow and no one shows yeah. up do all this work and people aren't responding but then it's like you just break through that thing it's not hard to break be, it's not hard to show up more than everyone else. Right. Because everyone else is going to post four episodes and of their podcast and then they're going to yeah. quit because no one's listening to it. So it's really, people are like, oh, that's, congratulate. I get that because I have 67 episodes of my podcast yeah. over, it's been like <laughs> several years, but. It's incredible. Uh, people are like, people now are like, they don't even listen to it, but they're like, oh, congrats on your successful podcast, <laughs> yeah. 
was like not maybe successful. But they just assume that it is because right. they're like, well, you wouldn't still be doing it if it wasn't working. And and that's the thing of it, this went back to Pennsylvania uh, thing, but th- it's all relevant of like by keep going. Yeah. If if it even if it isn't successful, people are going to assume that it is. Yeah. Which will make it successful. That's so funny, man. And uh, so that's like funny. <laughs> so My funny. podcast, I get people like, "Congrats, the podcast is going great!" Like yeah. literally, they've never listened to it and they don't know <laughs> what it is. But they're like, "Well, it's you're doing it, so that's good." And uh, to go back to Pennsylvania stuff because I think that's valuable too. Of there was no one there. And, yeah. And so. I had to create it, and and I was relatively close to New York City, and I would hit up different shows in New York City, and I would drive. It wasn't that you went, far. Like a three like, hour, two no, and a half? not even like oh, wow. uh, uh, an hour and something drive oh, into wow. New York City. That's amazing. So I would go do free shows in New York City and drive home at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and I would just show up and do this and show up back and forth and do yeah. all these things, and I started to become like. The New York City people like knew me in New York City from yeah. doing again the shows, the variety shows and burlesque shows and yep. and things like that. And um, so and, and I I just did a a little guest lecture at a business a business college and I t- I talked about all these things and about how like I create a community. It's like you never and as you said all every opportunity comes from a relationship that, that you've built. Yeah. And there's never a thing that you you get a gig because you were like qualified for it. That's assumed you get the gig because you showed up at this free show and someone saw you or this connection that you had. And I talked about that. And then I I showed, Oh, I was on, you know, I have then like, I was like showing clip. Oh, I did this Ellen appearance. Oh, Scott and I just did this Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg's new show appearance. And I performed all over all these places. And, that looks they're like well that's easy for you to say because you have all these things but like no i walked to juggling club through the snow and no one showed up it's huge that was 10 years ago and i didn't have any of that like i didn't start with anything right and and i think people see people that have a huge youtube channel like they literally uploaded a video one day and we're like well this is gonna suck yeah and then it didn't oh yeah um and so that's the thing of, and, and some, a girl asked me a question right towards the end. She was like, this sounds great that you have all this stuff and you have this network. But she was like, what if I don't have anything? And I was like, what if I don't have a family that even like supports what I'm doing, yeah. whether it's like financially or emotionally yeah. or whatever? Or what if I don't have any friends or a network? What if I don't have someone to help hold a camera? Like I used to have people be like asking me who my photographer was. <laughs> because I would my set right up my arm. phone. <laughs> I would set up my phone. I bought a ten dollar yeah. little like phone. Tra- this was like years ago, before little, little like everyone clip, had yeah. like a se- before selfie sticks. Yeah, yeah Joby clip for my phone. Yeah, and then I would put hook that onto the little tripod. Yep. and then I would put there was a ten second timer on your iPhone. Like now, it's like all like you had to figure this out like six right. years ago. It was yeah, like harder it was than it is commando. now. <laughs> And I would hit the button and then I would have to run in front of the camera and then I would yeah. stand and take these like epic beach shots and stuff. And people were like, who do you like have a photographer? Yeah. I'm like, no, that took me like a half an hour. Yeah, to get that one <laughs> picture. Yeah. And I would be posting these photos and, and it was like, I didn't have, like, I didn't, you know, I couldn't hire a photographer. I can't hire a photographer to follow me around right. now. But uh, you didn't use that as an excuse. No, to, like, it's oh. like, if you don't have the network, if you don't have a photographer, if you don't have a videographer, like figure it out. Like if you don't have a podcast producer... <sighs> Build a shed in your backyard. <laughs> See, no, it's true. You, Even that, like, I mean, Katie and I laugh because we're, I mean, we this house that we got and we're still, I mean, we'll be paying forever on it, but yeah. it was built in 1906. It's wonderful, but every day something breaks yeah. that I have to fix. <laughs> and like, people are like, how do you guys know how to do that? And we're like, we don't. Yeah. We learn when it happens. Or yeah. how do you know how to build a, a shed and turn it into like an actual building? I don't, but I yeah. did it in five right. weeks without knowing how to do it. Yeah. Because when you really commit, you like really just tell yourself and believe, like you said, believe in you. What was yeah. it that you said the guy said? Basically, like not waiting for other people to believe in yeah, you. Yeah, like, choose yourself. Choose yourself, man. It, when someone says, I can't cook. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't follow directions is what you're saying. Or right. you don't want That's to. That's my favorite. When people <laughs> say they can't cook or, or like I'll make dinner or something, people are like, oh, how'd you learn to cook? I'm like, you're making things hot. <laughs> <laughs> you made you're, that one a little hotter than this You're one. making <laughs> ingredients hot. That's how, if anyone out there is listening, they'd be like, I wish I could cook. 
make things take things that are in your fridge and make them hot right like, there, now you, you know how to cook throw you, some rice and broccoli that's what i had for, for lunch or br- late breakfast this yeah. morning i made rice yesterday and this morning i was in a rush so i chopped up some broccoli and put it right. in rice and i made it hot right if you if someone said you have to drive to fresno tomorrow and you've never been to fresno and you don't know how to get to fresno you wouldn't go i don't know i can't go to fresno <laughs> no you what would you do you'd put it in your gps it would give you directions you would follow the directions yeah. you'd be in fresno right yeah it's the same thing with a salad yeah you're right <laughs> you know it's the same thing with making a pot roast yeah how do i make a pot roast here's the directions follow them <laughs> yeah and that's so much like it's so many things of because uh, everything that i've done you didn't know how to start a podcast no. either and you, then you tried something like oh that sounds like garbage so yeah. oh fix this oh i need a better totally. microphone but you don't need that to start you don't no. need to know how to do anything i didn't know how to write a book but I didn't, and uh, uh, but I knew how to write a blog post every day. Yeah. So I wrote a blog post every, almost every day, a couple times a week for six months, and yeah. then I started throwing it in. Then I didn't know how to do the layout, and I asked somebody that was going to cost me seven hundred dollars to do the book layout yeah. from a graphic artist person, and I was like, I don't have seven hundred dollars to spend on this, so I'm going to watch one YouTube video, and in twelve <laughs> minutes, I knew how to do it. <laughs> So, and then I went over to my bookshelf and I was like, what book feels, feels I went right. through like what, yeah. which one feels like the, uh, a book. And I l- went through <laughs> yeah. and looked and I was like feeling them. I was like, like, oh, this, I don't remember what it was. It was some yeah. book. I was like, this feels like a book. I was how many pages is this? <laughs> Which it was feels like it was 150 pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm going to keep throwing these blog posts into this, yep. this page uh, layout in design. Yeah. Until it hits 150 and pages. And when it hits 150 pages, I know I'll be yeah. done with the book. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey guys, this is huge. If, because how everybody knows what they should do. Everybody has something that they've not done for years. And every year they say they're going to do it. And every yeah. year they get another year where they go, well, I'll just keep that same New Year's resolution. Mm-hmm. But what you're saying is huge, man. Because if you just commit to doing it, you can yeah. do it. I'm writing a book right now. I've never written a book. I don't know how to write a book, but I know that I need to write a book. And yeah. I've had this concept. And I talked to one of my buddies, Bob Goff, who's like my one of my favorite authors. The guy's brilliant. New York Times bestseller. I said, Bob, how do I write a book? He says, just write a thousand awful words. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it being good. Just write a thousand awful words. And then the next time you sit down to write, write another thousand awful words. He's like, yeah. you can clean it up. You can make it better later, but you just have to get get it out of you and onto the page. Yeah, you can't make it good. Yeah. Right away. There's something about just doing something though. Yeah. I mean, how many of your videos, you could speak to this from videography, but like how many of your videos do you start with and halfway through you go, this is going to suck. This is garbage. I might as well throw it away. And then you keep at it and you keep at it and then it ends up being fantastic, right? Yeah. Like- Almost every video I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'll just start over, do a new one. And yeah. then through the edit, but that's a, that's a, the, you know, you can't over edit. You can't like hope for the best in right. edits of whatever oh, yeah, books yeah, yeah, yeah. or podcasts. You need to start with something good. But you can bring life to something that you're like, ah, this isn't quite good. Or the best part is through uh, blogs or podcasts or YouTube videos or a show or something. You finish it or you post it or whatever, and you're like, ah, oh, man, that was, I just had a booby trap show where I dropped, I kept dropping this ball because I was wearing, <laughs> I was wearing dress pants and I'd never wear these dress <laughs> pants on stage and they were messing me up. Yeah. Uh, it looks sli- good. Too but, slippery. Uh, yeah. And then I was doing this thing where I kicked the ball and yeah. I dropped it like three times <laughs> right in a row, back to back to back. And I was just like, oh, that was like uncomfortable on yeah. stage. But then like I said a little like joke or something afterwards yeah. about it. And then somebody there was like, that was my favorite. Like that line that, that you line had was, was like favorite. my favorite thing you've ever Isn't said at Booby Trap. And I was like, oh, man, I dropped these things. But like you, I uh, through a mistake, I had a funny joke that I said that now that it's created now was something. funny. So it's ah. like just by doing even if you're terrible at it, yeah. do it. And then maybe you'll find like that's how I get that's how i because my show juggling wise my show isn't about like technical juggling yeah it's more about the experience and it's like how did i get there it was from doing bad like backyard shows where they yeah. don't care about the juggling you oh, need yeah. to figure out a way to make them care and, and and interact where like i'm doing like three ball tricks yeah and three clubs and people come up to me after shows like guys oh, i've never seen juggling like that yep i'm like well yeah you have but i just presented it in a way that was my way yeah um so that i think all i i know we went in a million different directions it's, which it's is where, where i go don't, don't worry about it there um, is there is no roadmap here 
And I, I think what you're saying is huge. Like not being afraid to think it has to be perfect. Like I think yeah. people think if it's not perfect, it's not worth doing. But perfection comes, the great stuff comes by doing it crappy a million yeah. times. I have a routine right now that I've done at least 200 times in front of a paying audience. At least 200 times. And I still am annoyed that it's not where it needs to be. But I know yeah. that I'm going to keep doing it until I, you know, and every time I tweak a little here, tweak there. I'm going to say this line. I'm going to leave that one out. I'm, you know, I'm going to use this kind of container instead of that one. Like you, you have to not be so um, afraid to mess up. Yeah. Because anything great, we wouldn't have electricity yeah. if he gave up when he was like, eh, it's not working the first time. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and that's nothing to add to that except, you know, agreeing. And it's like, pe- uh, I think people listening need to just, in a way, s- you know, stop, li- as we said earlier, like stop listening to the motivational stuff because sometimes that can be crippling of like you you get overly hyped up on that. Uh, you know, f- use the tools that are there, like those podcasts and right. stuff that will help you. But then it's like, you can't live in that world yeah. of consumption. You know, balance it. I talk about that too. Like balance it. Yeah, you can watch a YouTube video, but then make a YouTube video yeah, about that's... what you learn. Like it, it, we get crippled into this like education yeah. mindset of like, oh, we need to learn more. And it's like, well, just try it. Maybe you'll maybe you'll come up with your own way yeah. and then show people how you did it. That's like why I like... Because I've been taking photos now. People were like, "Hey, can I hire you to take my promo photos?" I'm like, "I don't know. I don't. It's not, I'm. I don't. I'm not a photographer. But that. But I have my style. And people are like, right. no, I like your look. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, but I. I just like this is like accidents happen and they look yeah. cool. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, do that. <laughs> Make yeah. those mistakes. Make your weird, crappy. Like as I, you I know, do it, things man. that aren't like technically right. But who cares? Who cares? Right. <laughs> and there's something about appreciating the creation regardless of the response it gets or yeah. how many people download it or whatever yeah. like the fact is you have 200 plus or 250 videos on your dude you've created 250 things yeah that's the win man yeah like that's the like i think about this podcast and i swear i'm at a point now where i don't even care if no one listens to do this i'll still do it because it's yeah. therapy for me you yeah. know but i go 60 weeks ago I sat down and said, I'm going to start a podcast. Actually, before then, I started prepping, right? But 60 weeks ago, I launched a podcast and I committed, I'm going to do, do it every week. Yeah. And I have 60 episodes. Yeah. That's amazing to me. Yeah. And it's not it's not like some glorious thing. Yeah. You just say you're going to do it and <laughs> you do one a week, you know? And I I think whatever our listeners, whatever they're, they're challenged with or they're struggling or they're feeling like they're not prepped or they're not ready. Look, nobody who's doing anything is ready for it. Yeah. You're never going to be ready to do the thing. The thing's always going to be changing. If you want to be a photographer, you're waiting for that piece of equipment. By the time you can afford it, it's going to be outdated. Yeah. Like right. you're waiting for, you know, to get this kind of acting gig and they're not going to be booking those by the time you finally go out. You just need to go out today and do something, whatever yeah. it is whether it's in the industry, whether it's with your career, your family, like just don't wait till you have the time because the time will be taken from you. You got to just do it. Yeah. I love it, man. You've encouraged me with that. (laughs) You challenged me. How can people, Chris, how can people follow along? I know you've got a lot of different projects, but what, what can we have them check out? to see uh to see what chris ruggiero is up to yeah i think the best spot for the main uh world is send them all to the youtube channel if you just search my name chris ruggiero wherever you're listening to this will yep. you'll be able to look at that and see how to spell it <laughs> yeah absolutely and we will put uh, in the show notes i will put a link there to uh chris's social media you can go follow along follow his journey and i'll also put a link to his youtube channel go uh link subscribe <laughs> go click subscribe uh, slap that bell. Is that a thing people say? <laughs> You've been watching too many Logan Paul videos. My, my niece is like seven and she's like, slap that bell. I'm like, what does that mean? Is that appropriate? Should we be telling we... people to slap the bell? I don't. Anyway, if if Chris's bell is available, slap it and, uh, <laughs> and follow along. Dude, thank you for doing this, man. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Appreciate it.